Good evening. I have no announcements. Just welcome to worship and let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please join with me responsively in the call to worship, which is taken from Psalm 46 and John 3, 17. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change. God sent Christ into the world not to condemn the world. God sent Christ into the world that the world might be saved through him. Let us worship God. Please bow with me in prayer. Eternal God, everlasting Father, as we gather here to worship as this sacred time of year is about to begin, we pray that you grace us with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and minds to sense your will, your word, and your ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wednesday begins the season of Lent with a public act of confession. We acknowledge that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We repent and return to our loving Creator. Acutely aware of our failure and frailty, we express our utter reliance on God's saving grace. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins before God let us pray together the prayer of confession as found in your bullet. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and to save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained 
and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth. Have mercy upon us, O God, and forgive us our sin. Restore us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to keep a time of silence for reflection and self-examination. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and show us your steadfast love. Turn to us in your mercy and redeem us by the cross and passion of our Savior. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Friends, believe the good news of the Gospels in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now let us turn to God to pray. Merciful God, your word is our way of truth and life. Create in us hearts that are clean and put your Holy Spirit within us so that we may receive your grace and declare your praise forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Listen for the word of God. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I actually heard a woman in seminary uh, comment on that passage that Dan just read, saying, isn't that just like a man always thinking about his stomach? (laughs) Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Listen for the word of God. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was hungry. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. He answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge of you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. 
May the Lord bless to understanding these readings from his holy word. Let us pray. O Lord our God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One sunny day, God was looking down upon the earth, and he was not pleased with what he saw. He was appalled by the way human beings were treating one another. Thus, God decided to send an angel down to earth to confirm whether or not his suspicions were true. So the angel of the Lord came to earth, spent a little time, and returned to heaven to make his report. He said, Lord, it's true. Ninety-five percent of all the people on earth are bad, and only five percent are good. God thought about that for a moment, then decided it might be wise to get a second opinion. So God sent another angel down to earth to see what things were like. The second angel came down to earth, spent a little time, then returned to heaven to make his report. He said, Lord, it's true. Ninety-five percent of the people on earth are bad, and only five percent are good. Thus, God decided to encourage that five percent of the population who were good. He decided to send them an email to encourage them. Do you know what that email said? What? You didn't get one either? (laughs) (laughs) That brings to mind the concept of the sinfulness of humanity. Are we really sinful human beings, or are we really, in fact, pretty darn good? One of the basic concepts of the Reformation was the doctrine of the depravity of humanity. In other words, we sinful human beings are incapable of any good apart from the impact of the Holy Spirit of God. Consider for a moment the last four commandments of the Ten Commandments. They are, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not covet that which thy neighbor has. Well, maybe we don't commit adultery. And maybe we don't steal. Yet aren't we all guilty of telling a little white lie every now and again? Aren't we all guilty of wanting something that someone else has, at least on occasion? Well, these days, of course, we try to rationalize our way around our own sins and demonize the sins we do not commit. Yet until we learn to confess our sins and repent of our ways, we have absolutely no hope of spiritual growth. All are in need of confession. All are in need of repentance. Ah, but in order for us to sin, something must first tempt us, don't you think? In order for us to break the laws of God, something must first try to lure us away. In the passage we read a moment ago from the Gospel according to Matthew, Jesus himself was tempted by none other than the devil. Jesus had been in the wilderness fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. That's when the devil came to tempt Jesus. At a moment he thought Jesus might be weak. Isn't that always the way? In any case, the devil said, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Then the devil took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem and said, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down so that angels might come and break your fall. Jesus replied, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Then in a moment, the devil showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. He said to Jesus, all of this I will give you if you will but bow down and worship me. Jesus said, 
be gone, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. The devil came to Jesus at a moment he thought Jesus might be weak. Yet Jesus managed to persevere in spite of the devil's wiles. Now, we're all Presbyterians here for the most part, aren't we? Perhaps some of us don't even believe in a literal devil. At the very least, we certainly don't speak of him very often. I'm reminded of a skit a comedian by the name of Flip Wilson used to perform. Now, some of you younger folk might not remember who Flip Wilson was. I suggest you go out and buy a Baby Boomer's edition of the Trivial Pursuit game. I think you'll find him there. In any case, Flip Wilson often played a character named Geraldine who would occasionally do something bad. Every time this character would do something bad, Flip Wilson would cry out, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. Now, for many of us, that's a cop-out. We tend to believe that our evil actions come from a baser place within ourselves and from some, not from some outside entity called the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, I have thought about this a great deal for the life of me. I cannot understand why on earth there would be a devil. For the life of me, I cannot understand why God would allow such a being to then roam the earth and wreak such havoc. Yet for some strange reason, God never seems to feel the need to explain his actions to me. Perhaps it has to do with the concept of free will. All I know is that there is a devil, whether I like it or not, and he's alive and well in our world today. I actually recently came across an interesting story that depicts the devil's wiles. Once upon a time, the devil called a convention of his demons, and the news was not good. The devil said, we can't keep people from going to church. We can't keep people from reading the Bible and finding out the truth. We can't keep people from forming relationships with Jesus Christ. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to fill their lives with so much clutter and noise that they don't have time for Jesus Christ. Make sure that their radios are always blaring when they're driving so they cannot hear that still, small voice. Keep their televisions and computers and video games on all the time at home so they can't keep their family relationships together. Come up with a Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition so men start to think that's the way women are supposed to look. Keep them working long hours to support their empty lifestyles. Make men and women tired at night and give them headaches so their relationships suffer. Give them a Santa Claus at Christmas so they forget about the birth of Jesus Christ and give them a bunny at Easter so they forget about the resurrection. Oh, and give them worthy causes. Keep them busy at their worthy causes so they want to sleep in on Sunday mornings. What do you think? Is the devil alive and well in our world today? Or is it all an elaborate hoax? So how do we avoid the devil's wiles? How do we escape the temptation to sin? It's called the expulsive power of a new affection. The expulsive power of a new affection. According to ancient Greek mythology, there was a place called the Isle of Sirens. The sirens sang so beautifully that ships crews were drawn to their singing and they ended up being shipwrecked on the rocks outside the island. When Ulysses passed the Isle of Sirens, he had himself tied to the mast and had his ears stopped up with wax. He tried to fend off temptation by the power of sheer will. When Orpheus passed the Isle of Sirens, he was not tempted by the sirens' songs. You see, 
he too was a musician. So he sat down on the deck and played music so much more beautiful than the sirens could ever hope to achieve. And that, my friends, is the expulsive power of a new affection. The expulsive power of a new affection overcomes temptation by surpassing it. We must learn to play more beautiful music ourselves. We must learn to prefer righteousness to licentiousness. We must learn to prefer peace and harmony to hatred, anger, and strife. We must learn to prefer the ways of God to the ways of anything else. Do that, and temptation will quickly become nothing more to you than mere notes of discord. Amen. <clears throat> Will you now please join with me in saying what we believe by way of the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your bulletins. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We are grateful, O Lord, our God, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, the ultimate sign of your love for us. We are thankful, O God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for your mercy, grace, and blessing. In this Lenten season, draw us ever closer to your throne of grace, that we may show grace. Draw us closer to your beloved Son, that we may show his love. Draw us closer to your Holy Spirit, that we may share compassion peace, and kindness with others. In this Lenten journey, we trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ, who brings life and direction to us. Lord, we lift these joys to you. Thanks be to God. In this season, we ask that you help us to engage in disciplines of kindness, righteousness, humility, and service. Guide us to consider such things as sending messages of care for people who are homebound or hospitalized, to offer notes of gratitude and support for health care employees or teachers or other frontline workers, to make gifts of generosity for organizations affected by the pandemic, to do works of compassion for those who have lost their livelihood to employ in our own lives commitment against injustice and inequality in our society. Guide us to take on new spiritual practices to nurture and heal our weary soul. Restore within us those spiritual exercises which have supported and strengthened us in our lives. We pray that through devotion to you, we may be enriched and enlightened by your presence in us. We pray that this may be a season in which we dedicate ourselves and our church to you by taking on disciplines of faith, to worship regularly, pray daily, study diligently, live faithfully, serve joyously, give generously, and witness boldly. Lord, we lift these concerns to you. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, your Son is for us the way, the truth, and the life. We turn to him in gratitude and devotion that this Lent may be a season of awareness and growth for each of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Presbyterian Church, the Sacrament of Communion is open to all who seek to come to know God better. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Therefore, let us forgive one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. In fulfillment of Christ's promise, O God, you poured out the Holy Spirit upon the chosen disciples and filled the church with power. We thank you for sending your spirit to us today to kindle faith and to teach the truth of your son, Jesus Christ, working in the church to make us faithful disciples and empowering us to proclaim the living Christ to every nation and every generation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and when he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so, remembering me. I invite you to receive the elements of communion by coming down the center aisle. Uh, I will give you the bread and Dan will have the cup. Please proceed back to your seats by way of the outside aisle. I ask also that you please hold the bread and hold the cup that we might commune together. broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. It's harder than it looks. Body of Christ broken for you. 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 Not gluten free. Body of Christ broken for you. Gluten free. Broken for you. Gluten free? Okay. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry. Those who believe in me will never thirst. Jesus said, the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so, remembering me. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, for the supper shared in the spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, who makes us new and strong, who brings us life everlasting. We praise you for giving all good gifts in him and pledge ourselves to serve you, even as you have served us. 
In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Temptation is overcome by the expulsive power of a new affection. In other words, something has to come along that we prefer to temptation. Now go in peace, and may the God our Father abide with us always. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.